Okay, as I mentioned last time, we're going to be starting chapters 12 and 13, radiation heat transfer. Be there for about two weeks. Start off, and we, we discussed it very briefly in chapter one. We said that uh, thermal radiation is unique in that it is, it's the only one of the three modes of heat transfer that can occur in a vacuum. You can't have conduction in a vacuum. You can't have convection in a vacuum, but you can have radiation in a vacuum. So it's important in applications like that, besides other applications, space applications, a vacuum. So it's sometimes it's very important. Sometimes it, it can be neglected. We'll talk about that later on uh, when we get to certain problems. Official definition. Thermal radiation is electromagnetic radiation emitted by a body due to its temperature. You can also look at it from the point of view of photons carrying energy. There's two approaches. We're going to focus, and our book focuses on talking about thermal radiation uh, as electromagnetic radiation. The key thing is it's due to its temperature. Okay. Figure 12... Five or three. Let me, let me make sure which one it is. I think it's three, maybe. Yeah, it's three. Uh, figure 12, three. The EM spectrum. <coughs> we plot on the x-axis the wavelength. Wavelength is lambda. It's in units of micron, 1 times 10 to the minus 6 meters. And we're going to show, first of all, at very uh, short wavelengths, X-rays out uh, from, this is, by the way, 10 to the fourth, minus four, minus three, minus two, minus one, one, 10, 100. Okay, so we said we'll start here at 10 to the minus fourth. I'll just show x-rays on this side. 10 to the minus 2. X-rays. Short wavelength. Uh, we go out above 10, above 100. And on out, these are microwaves. Uh, we go from 10 to the minus 2 to uh, 0.4. There's 1, there's 0 0.1, 0 0.4. 0 0.7. So we go from 0.01 to 0.4. UV. 0.7 out to 100. Infrared. The region from here to here, visible. Now, thermal radiation starts 10 to the minus 1 and goes out to 100. That's what we're talking about in these chapters. Thermal radiation from one-tenth micron out to 100 microns. Now, we talked about a black body. I'm going to erase microwaves to use this panel board right here. Of course, <coughs> microwaves aren't caused by the body's temperature. X-rays aren't caused by the body's temperature. What's caused by the temperature of the body? Thermal radiation. So from here to here is where we focus our attention for radiation. We're going to go back now and talk about a black body again from chapter one. Black body. It's uh, characterized by this. 
It's the best possible emitter. And we said in chapter one, that means the emissivity is one. It uh, absorbs all incident radiation. And number three, it's a diffuse emitter. We'll talk about a diffuse emitter uh, probably the start of uh, Wednesday's class. So those are the three things that define a, uh, a black body. It, it, it's, uh, it's a model. Uh, it, it's hard to build a black body. We, we, we talked about uh, that before. Um, you, you could buy good flat black paint at a hardware store. Good flat black paint. And uh, paint it, this color right here, kind of flat. Uh, that, that might be an emissivity of 0.92 or 0.93. It is not 1.0, but it's up there in the 90s, 90%. So that, that paint might absorb 90% of the incident radiation. So it's a model. Um, it doesn't happen too often. Uh, nothing in this room really is a black body, obviously. The walls are a gray-green color. The ceiling's white. The floor is tan. And, and those all have emissivities less than one. They're, they're not black bodies. We'll talk more about that in about maybe two days. Okay, so uh, for a black body, we're going to plot how it emits radiation. So on the x-axis, we have lambda. On the y-axis, we have something called E, B, lambda. And I'll just define those right here. Uh, e, B, lambda is the spectral black body emissive power. It's in uh, watts per square meter per micron. Kind of strange units, but it's in watts per square meter per micron. Uh, for a black body, I'll write down the equation, a constant divided by <coughs> C1 and C2 are constants. <coughs> Values in the text. called Planck's Law. Planck's Law. It tells us how a black body emits radiation. Here's what the, what the terms mean. When you see a capital E, it stands for emissive power. E stands for emissive power. Emissive power means how much is getting out. Emitting. It's the emitting part. What's the B stand for? Subscript B, black body. Subscript lambda, a function of wavelength. A function of wavelength. The word spectral means depends on wavelength. Spectral means depends on wavelength. So it's the point to them. The spectral black body emissive power. That's how you read it. You can plot this guy now. Choose a temperature T. Hold the temperature constant and plot E, B, lambda versus lambda. And you would get a family of curves that looks something like this. As the temperature goes up, different curves. Let's just, I'll put some numbers in 
T1, T2, T3. So for this particular picture, T3 is greater than T2, is greater than T1. So if we're going to describe this graph now, you'd say, okay, as the temperature goes up, it looks like the body is emitting more energy. Well, that kind of makes common sense. That to be expected. The hotter something gets, yeah, it's going to emit more energy, thermal radiation. Conclusion number two. For any curve where temperature is a constant, it looks like it goes through a maximum. Yeah, you're right, it does. For any given temperature, the curve goes through a maximum. That's two conclusions from the graph. See, a graph is really neat when you plot it. You couldn't tell it from a spreadsheet. If you put those numbers on a spreadsheet, I guarantee you, you have a real tough time figuring out what I'm, what I'm saying right now. Okay, so. As the temperature increases, the body emits more radiation. Okay. For any given temperature, we go through a peak value. Here's a third conclusion. It looks to me like as the temperature gets lower, that peak value moves to the right at longer wavelengths. As the temperature goes down, the peak emissive power moves to the right to longer wavelengths, longer wavelengths. Yeah, they found that out. And then, if I had drawn it right, if you plot this, it would look something like this. It's a curve, it's not a straight, that's a curve. This is the locus of the peak emissive powers, that dashed line, the locus of the peak emissive power. Well, they found out that lambda max t equal a constant and that constant is 52, 15.0, now let's do the SI version, uh, 2897.6. And the cost, that's micron K. Let's box him in. This is called the displacement law. Let's uh, see what it's telling us. All right, I'm going to put in a temperature of 300. So if this line right here has a temperature of 300 K, this is what this says, lambda max equal 2897.6 divided by 300. Now, don't forget, we're in chapter 12 and 13. Every temperature, every temperature better be an absolute. So you got to shift gears. All right, 2898 divided by 300. 9.66. almost 10. Okay, that peak right there occurs at 9.66 microns. So make sure you read that equation right. Don't read it this way. This is the maximum wavelength. No, no, you got it all wrong. It's not the maximum wavelength. It's the wavelength at which the emissive power is a maximum. The wavelength at which the emissive power is a maximum. It's called the displacement law. And then if you take one particular temperature, and plot this for one particular temperature, T, 
and integrate this from over all possible wavelengths. which would be the area under the curve. That's EB. Integrated over all possible wavelengths. Boy, does an interesting thing come out. When you do that integration, which is, looks pretty nasty there. There's a lambda. There's a lambda. Go ahead and integrate it. Wow, you know, it's not what you memorize, I don't think. You get a very simple result. Hard to believe. Sigma, a constant, sigma t to the fourth. That's all it is when you integrate that. We've had that back in chapter one, that the Stefan-Boltzmann law. It's the area under Planck's law curve, the constant sigma. You know what that was, that, we have that in our notes room. I'll put it down anyway. Uh, sigma. Okay. That's the absolute temperature. That's the absolute temperature. Outside, the temperature is minus 100 degrees Fahrenheit. The surface is icy. Put your hand close to it. I don't think it's emitting radiation. Temperature is minus 100 degrees Fahrenheit. My hand doesn't feel warm when I put it near the, near the sheet of ice. But is it emitting radiation? Let's assume the ice behaves like a black body. Oh, yeah. Anything above absolute zero emits radiation, no matter how cold it is. Temperature, one degree Kelvin. One degree Kelvin, just above zero. Is it emitting radiation? Oh yeah. How much? One to the fourth is one. Times sigma. How much radiation? Oh my gosh, 5.67 times 10 to the minus eight. Watts per square meter. Not a lot, but it is emitting radiation. So the lesson is every temperature above absolute zero emits radiation. This wall, take one square meter. It's emitting radiation. My skin, take one square centimeter. It's emitting radiation. Everything in this room is emitting radiation. Exchange it between here, the front wall, you, the floor, the ceiling, the back wall. Radiation going in all directions from our surfaces, my skin, the linoleum, the tile, acoustical tile, the whiteboard, oh yeah, they're all emitting radiation. Now, if I, um, if I would block out those blinds, totally block out those blinds, no natural light, and I turn the lights out in this room, I guarantee you, you couldn't see a thing in here. You would be like totally blind. You would see blackness in front of your in front of your face. But when I when I open the blinds up, you see natural light. And I'll say, hey, I can see now. It's my friend Joe in here. Yeah, you can see all of a sudden. You know, well, 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 what's going on? Well, the room, everything here is about this temperature. Where um where are these things in my head? Good detectors? Eyeballs. Good detectors? Look at it. What's the wavelength? Maximum? 7 tenths. What's the wall radiating at? 10 microns. Can I see the wall? Of course I can. Can I see my hand? Of course I can. Why not? Because my hand is a little above 300. I can't see it. I can only see stuff from 4 tenths to 7 tenths. Yeah, unless, where does this radiation occur? Look over here, 10, oh, guess what, infrared. Unless I put my military infrared goggles on and go out at night and I'll see you out there at night because I'm wearing infrared goggles, not my eyes, but something to help my eyes to see 
body temperature, 300, right here, infrared goggles. Yeah. Uh -huh. If I turn the lights out and open the blinds, I'll see in here. Why? Because natural light comes through that window. Natural light. People have found out that the equivalent black body surface temperature of the sun, the equivalent black body surface temperature of the sun is about 5,800 Kelvin. So when that radiation comes through that window and strikes that desk and strikes your body and strikes the floor, it comes to my eye. It's from the sun. Let's see if these lights be now. Let's see where it is. Lambda max T. Lambda max. 5,800. Uh, oh, not 5,800. 2897.6. Divided by 5,800. Oh, boy, that's... I have a micron. So here's the graph. Here's the temperature, the equivalent temperature of the sun, 5,800 Kelvin, right here. Where's the maximum occur? Oh, surprise of surprises. Right in the middle of my transducer's maximum sensitivity, called my eyes. So when the lights are out, and through the window comes natural light, of course I see you and the walls and my hand and the, and the desk, because my eyes are sensitive in that range, and the peak emission falls right in the middle of that range. So that tells why we can see in this room with the lights out. Okay. okay, back over here again now. All right, now, many times we're interested in not finding the total energy emitted, but we're interested in finding how much energy is emitted between wavelengths of zero and a lambda called lambda one. So here's my curve again. Now I want to go from zero out to lambda one. Okay, so that would be EB zero to lambda one. Okay, the work night. You have to integrate this big long expression, Planck's law. It's been done for you once and for all. So you go to table 12.1. The first column is titled lambda T, absolute temperature. The next column is F0 to lambda. F stands for fraction. It's the uh, integral 0 to lambda, EB lambda, D lambda, divided by integral 0 to infinity, EB lambda, D lambda. Of course, this denominator, Stefan Boltzmann law, that's just sigma t to the fourth denominator. There it is. So in this table, I'll just put one value down so you get to see the flavor of the table. Uh, let's see, table 12, 1. Um, I'll take a lambda t value of 40, 16 is 495. 40, 60, and 0 0.495. So that means 49.5% of the radiation falls between 0 and that lambda value, whatever that might be. All right, so you use table 12.1 to find this. Sometimes, we want to find the fraction of the emissive power that lies between two wavelengths called band emission. Band emission. So here's lambda 1, and here's lambda 2. And I want to find out how much emission occurs between 
those two wavelengths, a band between two given wavelengths. The fraction of energy that falls between wavelengths of lambda 1 and lambda 2, you can look at it and it makes sense graphically. Take the fraction that falls from 0 to lambda 2 and subtract off the fraction from 0 to lambda 1, this piece. And that gives you the band emission, the fraction from lambda 1 to lambda 2. So again, you use table 12-1 to find a fraction like that. <coughs> Okay, let's um, take a look at an example then. Let's see, I'm gonna save that maybe. I think I can erase this. I'll put it right here. I don't need this anymore, I'll save this. Okay, um, consider the uh, sun find out, um, find the fractions of energy <coughs> that falls in the UV, visible, and infrared regions. Okay. Don't forget I said that the, um, for us, the sun is being modeled as a black body Because, you know, that 5,800 Kelvin, maybe I missed it, but I don't think they sent a probe to the surface of the sun and landed it on the sun's surface and put a probe there and said, okay, guys, the temperature is 5,800. No, I didn't miss it. They didn't send a probe into the surface of the sun. First of all, I'm not sure there's even a surface of the sun to stand on. So who made this up, 5,800? Well, they sent a satellite up in orbit out of the atmosphere. They pointed its detector at the sun, and from that they deduced how many watts per square meter, so on and so forth. Here it is right here. Assuming the sun is like a black body. That they, they got, they, they got the, uh, the uh, emissive power of the sun as a function of wavelength. Put different wavelength filters in the transducer, and then they plotted data. And lo and behold, if you plot the data, and there's, there's graphs in the book that show that. They said, gee, it doesn't fit the 2,000K curve. It doesn't fit the 4,000K curve, but look at that. It almost fits perfectly the 5,000 in her black body curve. Therefore, we engineers will assume that the sun behaves as if it were a black body at an equivalent temperature of 5,800 degrees Kelvin. How? By deductions from a satellite in orbit of the Earth's atmosphere. Okay, that's the history. All right, back to this again now. All right, um, we've got to uh, do the stuff here. Okay, here it is. Here it is, band emission. I want to go, okay, let's put it down. Where is UV? Okay, UV, uh, right there. 
Don't forget now, only in the thermal radiation. It says it right there, thermal radiation. Okay, from fingertip to fingertip, where is UV there? From uh, one-tenth to four-tenths, the 10 to the minus one. Okay, one-tenth to four-tenths. Visible, four-tenths to seven-tenths. Infrared, seven-tenths to 100. Okay, <coughs> fraction, one-tenth to four-tenths. Fraction, four-tenths to seven-tenths. Fraction, uh, seven-tenths to 100. Okay, let's do um, lambda 1t. The first lambda is 1 tenth times 5,800. 580. Lambda 2t, lambda 3t, lambda 4t. Okay, let's see. 2320. 560, 580,000. Got it. Okay. There they are. The lambda T's. Go to table 12-1. From table 12-1, go to the first lambda T, 580. Fraction is zero from wavelength of zero out to uh, our one-tenth. Um, 2320. Twenty-three twenty <clears throat> fraction. Point one two. Five hundred and eighty thousand. Go to table twelve two. I probably that twelve two, not twelve one. You won't find it. It's not in the table. It's not in table twelve two. There's no five hundred and eighty thousand. But but there is. Yep, 100,000. Good news, four nines in a row. So guess what, anything above 100,000 is, okay, the answer is one. Answer one. <coughs> Fraction here is one. Okay, we don't need this. So now we'll find these fractions. Okay, zero point one two four nine. Oops, not there. Pardon me. Fraction from zero to point four minus the fraction zero point one. Zero to point four. Our fraction uh, was uh, point one two. Twelve percent. Fraction four tenths to seven tenths. Four nine five minus point one two. Thirty seven point five percent. Fraction point seven to one hundred. One hundred, okay, fraction zero to one hundred minus fraction 0 to 0.7, 1.0 minus 0.495. 
So of the sun's radiation, if you model the sun as a black body at 5,800 degrees, the biggest piece of it is in the ultra and infrared region, 50.5% of the sun's energy in the thermal radiation region is uh, in the uh, infrared, 12% in the ultraviolet, 37.5% in our visible spectrum. So our eyes are only sensitive to 37% of the energy emitted by the sun in the thermal radiation band. Not the majority, no, 37.5%. If you want to find an actual number then, uh, you can find the, uh, take the uh, 50.5, 0 0.505, multiply it by sigma t sun to the fourth. And that tells me how many watts per square meter leaves the sun's surface. Okay. Uh, raise that sun's temperature to the fourth power. Wow, is it big? How about 5,800 raised to the fourth power? Yeah, that's a big number, a big number. That's how much energy is contained in the uh, infrared region emitted by the sun. You take the fraction and you multiply it by sigma t to the fourth. Because that's where it is right here. That's where it comes from right here. Take the fraction, multiply it by sigma t to the fourth. Okay, so that takes into account how you use table 12.2 to solve band emission problems. Band emission becomes important sometimes <coughs> if you're dealing, just as one for instance, if you're dealing with solar cells, solar cells only respond to a part of the solar spectrum. And it's important to know what that is so you can find out what the output of the solar cells is. So you first of all, it's band emission. They only operate between certain wavelengths, lambda one and lambda two. And from the sun, there it is. Find out the fraction and so on and so forth. Okay, uh, let's take a look then at, by the way, if you ever get confused in this material, chapter 12, I'll say it, is probably, without doubt, the most difficult chapter in all of heat transfer to understand and comprehend. It is. It's very difficult to read. It's very important to take good class notes because if you try and read this, it requires a lot of concentration, a lot of concentration. If you ever get confused about what words mean, go to ta table 12.4 at the back of the chapter. There are 24 definitions of words, 24 definitions of what the words mean. What does the word spectral mean? What does the word diffuse mean? What does the word gray surface mean? Oh yeah, irradiation, radiosity, goes on and on and on and on. Yeah, it's a language. You have to learn the language of radiation first before I can talk to you. Otherwise, that doesn't make any sense to you. You have to learn the language. Okay, let's talk about when radiation strikes the surface, what can happen to it. We'll put that over here. So we have an incoming beam of radiation hitting a surface. This is a surface. It's a thickness right here. Radiation comes in, it strikes the surface. It's called G. G is called the irradiation. And uh, we can give it uh, either income, we'll just call it the incoming radiation. Our incident. The incident radiation. So we have this incoming beam of radiation. There's another word. I'll put them all on here. Irradiation. So if you see any one of those words, whether it be incoming radiation, incident radiation, or the irradiation, that's G. That's what comes into the surface. Once it comes into the surface, it can do several things. Number one is it can be reflected. Reflected is rho. Rho is a reflectivity, so rho G is reflected energy. 
rho is the reflectivity. Its values, its dimensionless, its values are between 0 and 1. 1 means everything is reflected off the surface. 0 means nothing is reflected off the surface. Some radiation can just go through the surface. That's transmitted. Tau times G. So tau G is transmitted. Tau is called the transmissivity. It's dimensionless. Its value can be between 0 and 1. Finally, some radiation can be absorbed in the surface, alpha times g. And alpha is dimensionless. Absorptivity. Its value can be between 0 and 1. When the incident energy comes in, where can it go? Well, the energy distribution is what comes in is G. Now, again, you've got to watch these symbols. What does capital E mean? Emissive power, how much it emits. What's capital G mean? The incident or irradiation, how much comes into a surface. G comes into a surface. Capital E goes out of a surface. Where does that energy go? Well, number one, it might be absorbed. Number two, it might be reflected. Number three, it might be transmitted. Divide through by G. When you add those three properties together, you get one. When you add them together, you get one. If I know two, I can calculate three. If I know two properties, I can calculate the third. Okay. Uh, let's talk a little bit about um, tau. Tau equals zero, opaque surface. <clears throat> opaque surface means nothing gets through. Concrete wall here. With my eyes, I, I, I can't see anything in the hall. I, I, I can't even see fuzzy figures of people out in the halls with everything. Is that the person I see there? No, no, I, I can't see a thing. Conclusion, I can't see a thing through that wall. That must mean tau is zero. No radiation in the visible part of the spectrum came through that wall to my eyes. That's just the visible spectrum. OK. This over here is a solid surface. It's called glass. The purpose of glass is to let light through. We want natural light in the room to help with the lighting situation. What do I want, an opaque surface? Of course not, that wall's opaque. That glass, I want, I want to have a high transmissivity. I want sunlight to come through there. So I want a high value of tau, over 90%, hopefully. 
Well, when the sun strikes that, and by the way, not just the direct sun. There's no direct sun on that glass right now. That's all reflected solar energy. That reflected solar energy has the same wavelength distribution as the sun. It's being reflected. Okay, so that's what's coming through the window is reflected sunlight, but it has the same wavelength distribution. Um, is there any reflection? Oh yeah, there's reflection off glass. You can buy anti-reflective coatings for glass and coat glass with what's called anti-reflective coatings to cut down on the reflection. But there is reflection off that glass from the outside. Sometimes on some solar collectors on roofs, the neighbors complain because at certain angles of the sun, at sunrise or sunset, they can get blinded in their backyard because of the reflection off of those solar panels. So you want to cut down on that reflection. So yeah, there, there, there is some reflection. Not a lot. This guy should be over 90%. That guy's a few percent. Say, so, yeah, well, is, is, is um, anything being absorbed in that glass? Oh yeah, that's not expensive glass. There's iron in that glass, iron in that glass. And if you hold that glass or shoot that glass up in here to the light, if you see a green tinge on the edge of the glass, that means that glass has iron in it. So um, you can, uh, you know that what the iron does? It absorbs radiation, so alpha is not zero. It does absorb some, not much at all, but it's absorbed. If you're building a solar collector, you can get glass with low alpha. You can buy low alpha glass. It, co it costs more. Is it worth it? I don't know, do the economics. Is it, is, it, is it better for a solar collector? Technically, oh yeah. It lets more sunlight through to hit the uh, absorber plate, but it's gonna cost you more for that special glass. The glass is called water white, water white. It's so white, there's no green tinge to it. Hold on edge, look at it. There's no green tinge on the edge of the glass. Water white glass. Yeah, so cuts down on that guy right there. So that's what this gives you. It's called surface properties. Surface properties. There are three surface properties, okay, here in this equation. Alpha, rho, and tau. If tau is zero, it's an opaque surface. Okay, so let's do one more. Let's look at... Um, when, when a surface emits radiation, uh, we, had the, we had that black body, one, two, and three. One, the best emitter. Two, the best absorber, absorbs all energy. Uh, three was a surface is diffuse. Okay, so what is a diffuse emitter? Okay, diffuse emitter. When it emits radiation, like this stuff right here, okay. When it emits radiation, diffuse emitter means it emits equally in all directions. There's no preferred direction of emission. It's the same in all directions above the surface. That's a diffuse emitter. Now, you can also have a diffuse reflector. So in comes the radiation beam G, and then when it's reflected, looks like this. It has no preferential direction, rho G. That's a diffuse reflector. Yeah, yeah. I might have you hang on until uh, Wednesday. I'm not sure. I'm gonna think about. It. I've got. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna do examples, but I'm not sure I'm gonna do it right now. Rather than tell when I do the next step. Yeah, I've got time. We'll do it. Uh, okay, let's take this one. This is a specular reflector. Uh 
off of the angle of incidence equal the angle of reflection. That's specular. Mirror-like. In common words, mirror-like. In engineering words, specular. Mirror-like. The angle of incidence is the same as the angle of reflection. We don't, in this book, in this book, in this course, we don't look at these guys. In this course, we'll only look at diffuse emitters and reflectors because when you do this kind of here, it mathematics goes up dramatically. Save that for the graduate class, okay? Specular reflective surface like mirrors. <clears throat> um, Here's clear glass. I can see right through it. I can see people walking. I can see tree leaves. I look down here. I can't see people walking. I see nobody out there. All I see is a, a white haze, like fog. Why did they put that in the window? Why did they put that in building nine here? And that's glass up here, and that's this. You know, listen to this glass. Listen to that glass. Oh yeah, there's a difference. That glass has little bumps on it. You know what that glass is? That's a, that's a diffuse transmitter. A diffuse transmitter. Afternoon, <coughs> you can pull these blinds up. Let's go, let's go. You can pull these blinds up. Afternoon, the sun comes through here near sunset. Those sycamore trees are probably five foot tall in 19, whatever it was, 64, when it was building built. When that sun would set from the southwest over there, sun would stream through here and make that board blinding and your eyes blinding. So you, so you put the blinds up and stop right here. Now you've still got natural light coming through, but you don't have blind spots in this room. This is a diffuse surface. Why is that wall painted that rather than a glossy, glossy paint? Why that, that really glossy? Because when the light strikes it, we don't want it to be mirror-like. I don't want to see my face in that wall. No. <laughs> That's a diffuse paint. Diffuse. Call it flat if you want to go to the paint store. We call it flat paint. Diffuse. Gloss paint, I can see almost my face. At least the shape of my face. Yeah, that, that's what the word diffuse means. You have washed your car today. Prediction is for light sprinkles on Thursday. You got your car washed, polished. And you, ah, just look at that. Look at that hood, man. There's my face, and it sure is pretty. <laughs> yeah. What's the idea when you polish your car? You want a specular reflector. You want a mirror-like finish. And along comes Thursday. Here come the sprinkles. And you go out and they say, oh my gosh, I'm gone. I can't see my face anymore. Guess what it is now? Sun strikes the surface, boom, spreads the light out. And it's no more mirror-like. <laughs> oh gosh, I got to wash my car again. That's the example of bright future versus specular. These lights, why is there that bumpy stuff on, on, on that? Oh, I just told you, over there in the window. It's to spread the light out. They're light diffusers. The purpose is of that is that somebody's sitting in that back corner over there and over there, and the person in the front seat there and there, in the middle, all have about the same amount of light on their desktop. Okay, diffuse surfaces for the lights for us. Otherwise, you'd see just tubes. I see tubes, but I see kind of hazy. You've seen my papers up here. All of a sudden, they'll blow on the floor. They've done it many times this quarter. That guy over there. He's the problem. He's supposed to be an HVAC diffuser. There's the word again, light diffuser, HVAC diffuser. What's the purpose of that guy? Well, he's got a problem, but this is the purpose of that guy. Um, he's supposed to make it so nobody's hair in that corner, in the front, in that corner, the front or the middle, nobody's hair goes blowing and papers don't blow off my desk up here. He's not doing too good a job right now. <laughs> but those little veins in there, those little veins, those are diffusers. Their purpose is to spread the volume of air out so it comes out very gradually and nobody's uncomfortable. Nobody's paper on their desk is moving around, your hair's not flying around, no. HVAC diffuser, 
a light diffuser, the window is a solar diffuser. Oh yeah, yeah. Most things in the world are diffusers. You know, the walls are diffuse paint called flat paint. So yeah, that's what the word diffuse means here. Spread things out. How? Equally. The light, equally in all directions. HVAC diffuser, equally in all directions. That's the purpose of the diffuse reflector. You ever follow a truck, a refrigerated truck on the highway? Refrigerated truck on the highway. I don't care what freeway, come, go, when you're going to school, watch it. Refrigerated <laughs> trucks have aluminum surfaces on, on, on the truck by the trailer that, that, of course, reflects the heat away from, from the, what's inside, the cold stuff. You want to reflect the heat off of the uh, aluminum surface, excuse me. Well, did you ever notice on the, uh, that back, that back? Door there. It is not smooth. Look at it sometimes. The sides are smooth. The back door is not smooth. It looks like it's quilted. <clears throat> quilted. The purpose is if you're following that guy on a two lane highway at night and you want to pass him, most people will flash their bright lights, let the guy know I'm coming around. Well, if you flash those bright lights on a aluminized polished surface, it'll come right back in your eyes and blind you and that's not, bad things happen. That quilted surface does what again? I'll tell you. It does that. It takes the incoming beam from your high beams in your car and it spreads them out when it hits the back of that refrigerated trailer so that you don't get blinded at night passing the guy. So it's all through, it's all through our life, those surfaces. So in our class, we're only looking at those two guys. Forget him right now, okay? That was just to tell you the difference in the two, diffuse versus specular. Okay, big long conversation, but I think we'll stop for today, then we'll see you on uh, Wednesday.